okay, milk machine basics using our simple pulse milking machine. So we have a fairly small farm here and I milk, um, right now I'm milking about 10 goats a day, twice a day. So this little machine does pretty well for us. It's not too big, not too bulky, um, not affiliated with the company. I just enjoy this machine and wanted to do a video for anybody who is thinking about getting one um, just to kind of show how we use it. You can go to simplepulse.com for more information and to see prices on the machine. But it's a, a great machine for, we raise Nigerian dwarf goats, but you can use it on all breeds of goats. Okay, so we're going to go through the different parts of the machine. I'm going to quickly try and explain. So this is the milk filter which goes right in the top of these lids um, that are really handy. I, I love how it filters the milk as it comes into the jar so you don't have any dirt or particles sitting in your milk the whole time you're milking it. Now on the front of the machine here, this is a two goat milking system. I have one of the control valves closed as you can see and one is open. You want to make sure that's open when you're milking or else your pressure um, you don't have any pressure. Showing those are your control valves. There it's in the open position and that's closed. This is your pressure gauge. This is your pulsator on top. Pressure valve and overflow jar. So we're going to kind of show how we connect milk lines. The blue cap here is where you, it says milk right on top of it, so that's where your milk line goes. And then the white cap part is your air flow, so that's creating suction through the jar, pulls the milk into the jar and air out through the machine. Make sure, again, very important that your control valve is in the open position. So you'll turn the power on to the milking machine and then we are going to check our lines to make sure we don't have any air gaps, that we're getting pressure uh, and suction going through the machine. There's the quick step guide. I just keep it on the side of the machine in case I have somebody come out of town and somebody needs to milk for me. It's a handy little guide they send with that um, is the steps that we're talking about today. So testing, you can push your flanges together when the machine is running. And what you want to see is those inserts compressing together and that shows us that we have good suction running through the machine. So everything's in working order. And we're going to turn off the machine and prepare to bring our doughs in. Okay, so this is our milk stand, and uh, we've got our milk machine all set up, tested, lines connected to the jars, ready to go. So we're going to move over here and bring in a dough and start milking. I will kind of point out, it's taken me a while to figure out this setup, but I do like having a separate holding area here for my milk my doughs in milk um, because otherwise you get a lot of doughs trying to push through that gate at one time. There's some bottle kids in the first pen here.
Okay, so we're prepping our milk stand, getting our teat spray ready, our wipes, and getting a little grain in the feed tray for the first dough to come in. And I have it all ready to go for them so they get right to milking. So the trick, the trick is to get one dough coming through the gate at one time, which is not always easy. But this is Zsa Zsa. She's very excited to get some grain. Most of the doughs look forward to being milked. Um, they come running right in and hop, hop right up on the stand. Okay, so I use potty pads um, just to keep my hoses and flanges off the milk stand because you know their feet are a little mucky when they're going up and down. Uh, they can bring some dirt and muck onto the stand, so just use that for cleanliness. Here it shows we wipe the teats with a fragrance-free wet wipe or teat wipe. Just helps again cleanliness. And then you can express a little bit of milk into your wipe or into a strip cup that just kind of gets any dirt that might have worked its way up into the udder. So you're not getting that in your milk. So we'll turn our machine on. So you connect um, the hoses. There is a suction. Usually you just have to press the flanges right on there. Um, sometimes a teat will get sideways in there if you don't see the teat. So you can kind of, they're a little see-through so you can see it in there. If it's no milk is flowing, then you just check that you have a good connection going. Some does don't like the weight of the lines hanging. So you can kind of hold them up um, with new does that are learning the milk machine. I'll do that a little bit until they get used to it. Kind of hold it so it's not, the pressure is not hanging on them. Most does really aren't bothered by it. They're into the grain that's in the bowl in front of them. But. As you can see here, the milk is flowing down through the flanges, into the claws, and then down the milk lines. So we've got a good flow going here for Shraja. And then the machine pulls it up through the milk filter and into a collection jar. So we massage the udder to encourage the milk letdown, it's called. Um, the udder can have more than one milk letdown in a milking session. Um, if you've ever seen baby goats nursing on their mothers, they do bump the udder quite hard and that the reason to do that is to release the milk. So it, it does encourage the milk to be let down. And that's why we massage and bump the udder and jiggle the flanges around. We hand milk the last um, bit out of the udder. Some, some doughs help hold on to a little bit milk, a little bit of milk more than others. Um, some will milk completely out, but usually there's a couple squirts left in there. And this is a show dough. So she is judged on capacity as well. So the more milk we can get out in a milking session, um, it helps to increase her production. It does look a little vigorous, but um, I assure you, it's not hurting her at all. I'm 
I lift the line, the milk line, into the air to get the last little bit of milk out. You can also push the valves, the claw valves, um, force air through the line faster, and it will shoot the milk into the jar so that it kind of clears your line a little bit. You turn your power off to the machine. And then you want to be sure, as a final step, to disinfect the teats to prevent mastitis in your dose. So a very important step. Fight back. Teat disinfectant is what we use here. Remove the body pad. Now I did an example just on one dough, but uh, we would then release Jaja back out here into the group and bring in another dough until we had all ten doughs milked. And here comes the bone. She knows right where to go. So, cleaning and disinfecting your milk machine. So I have two jars here, so it's kind of just like as if you were milking. You put your air line on the white part of the lid and your milk line on the blue part where it does say milk on top. You want to check that you don't have a filter, a milk filter in there when you're cleaning the machine. You want the soap and bleach water to move through easily. So we have a bucket with soapy water here. And then we have a bucket with bleach water here. So we use the soap water first. So we'll turn on our milk machine. We place both flanges into the bucket with soapy water. Just as if you were milking, it's, it's doing the same type of action. Now if you press the claw valves, it forces the water up through the hose quicker and faster. So I kind of press those buttons to get your soapy water moving through your lines. And then you just kind of let it run for a little bit. So you can do a half jar and then do your bucket of bleach water or you can do um, you should do the full jar of soapy water just because the time if you let it run through it's, it takes a few minutes and it's just longer that it's that water is cleaning through your tubes but so you would fill the jar and then empty it and then come back and be, do the bleach water bucket. For this video we're showing half fill of soapy water and then half fill of bleach water. And there are special cleaners out there and special soaps uh, that you can purchase. We just use Dawn dish soap as our soapy water bucket. So then once you've run your bucket of soapy water through um, and then you've emptied your jar out you can then switch to the bleach water and again you press your claws down. They have little valves in there that pull the water through faster. Just kind of helps clean those claws a little bit. And I don't know why they're called claws, they just are. And it's the little ends here below the flanges. It has a valve um, and gaskets in there and it just um, helps the pulsating machine. The water's going in. We just let it run again for about five minutes it takes usually to fill the jar. Again, I'm just doing a half fill of each. I would suggest you do a full bucket of the soapy water and a full bucket of the bleach water and then the machine will be nice and the line will be nice and clean and that's what we're cleaning here where the milk has gone through. So 
So I raise those flanges in the air again and just try and get all the excess water into the jar and out of the line. Now you don't need to do the plain water rinse after bleach water. Um, it'll dry and then when the, once the milk runs through the next day, um, the bleach doesn't, doesn't affect the milk. It doesn't get in here. You know, it's, it's gone alkaline once it hits the milk. So I just clean my air hose line and the bleach water I guess switchy. You now it is if you do get milk in there because it is an overflow line as well. I clean it a little bit better with soapy water and then bleach water. But if I don't use it as an out overflow line, it's just pulled air through there. Then a light cleaning is okay. So you turn the power on to your machine, and it's a really handy little feature here. Um, this is the filtered exhaust and it has warm air that comes out of that hose. And so it's a clever little drying device which you can see the water moving up. It just helps the speed up the evaporation process um, so you don't get any mildew or bacteria growing in your lines. I really like this feature about the Simple Pulse. So I'll go empty my buckets and let the machine run for about five minutes with um, connected to the, the hose, the exhaust hose. Now I leave it connected like this in between milking so once it's dry I lay them over the top of the machine and we'll kind of show that too where we cover it but I leave it connected to that um, exhaust hose the whole time and then I know nothing's going down into the tubing because it's still connected to the machine. So I hope you enjoyed the video of milking machine and cleaning process. This is our simple pulse milking machine. So we're going to pack it up here and I lay the flanges over top you saw, saw there and then we cover it so that no dust or dirt gets on our machine since it is a barn there's always dust just to keep everything clean. friends thank you for watching please remember to hit the subscribe button to watch more of informative adorable and funny videos